What is going on Navigation Nation and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be answering the question of who you should go with for your grading company. Are you going to go with CGC or are you going to go with PSA? Now as you might imagine the answer isn't exactly straightforward or clear cut and really a lot of it has to do with your particular situation or the goals that you have for yourself in getting your cards graded. But for today, we're gonna to go ahead and run through the pros and the cons of both CGC and PSA. And then I'm gonna give some recommendations, you know, based upon your given situation, whatever that may be, or whatever your goals may be, what my recommendation would be as to which company you should go with. And then I'll go ahead and finish up with some opportunities that I see for both CGC and PSA as we move into the future. But before we get rolling, guys, do me a favor. Give me that double slap attack, one for that like button, one for that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified every single time a new investment video is dropped, go ahead and thunder punch that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. So to start things off, guys, we will go ahead and break down uh, both the pros and the cons that I see for CGC and PSA. And we'll go ahead and start with CGC. Now, for those of you who may not be that familiar with CGC or Certified Guarantee Company, I have made a, another video that goes into a full breakdown of exactly how you can get your cards graded with CGC and everything about the company. I will be sure to link that up in the eye so that you can check that out if you want a more thorough breakdown. But starting off with the pros. The first thing and, and perhaps the biggest advantage that CGC has over PSA as things currently stand is the turnaround times. So if you've been watching the, the turnaround for PSA, uh, we are looking at five to six months potentially before you can get your cards back in your possession. You compare that with CGC and their turnaround times are more on average of about 60 days. Now it does depend on which grading tier you are going with, but on average it is looking at about 60 days for that turnaround. So, you know, you're looking at about a third of the time that it would take for PSA. So that is a huge pro for going with uh, CGC and one of the big reasons why many people have gone down this route. The other thing that I have noticed is that with CGC, they do appear to have a more consistent grading scale. And what I mean by that is if you were to send in two cards that appear to be in identical condition, CGC more often than not is going to have uh, more consistency in those cards coming back in the same grade where on the flip side I have noticed that PSA uh, I don't know why but there has been inconsistency in the the overall grades that have been coming back on cards and I've heard this from a lot of other people in the community uh, both collectors and investors those who have used both services they have noticed a little bit more consistency consistency in their grading uh, by going with CGC. The other big pro of going with this company over PSA, uh, in my opinion, are the subgrades. And much like Beckett, which is another you know, of the big three grading companies out there, uh, CGC does have subgrades or gives you the option to add subgrades onto the label itself. I really like this because it breaks down exactly what all of the characteristics uh, came back in so that you have a little bit more of a holistic view as to why your card received that overall grade. I think in the long term, I think this lends to a more valuable product for people uh, versus you know just having that single grade that you would get back with uh, PSA. So I think the subgrades definitely bode well for CGC. Now moving on to the cons. Uh, the, the first thing that I noticed with CGC is that it is more expensive, I would say on average, to have your cards graded uh, with 
CGC. Now, that is basically taking into consideration of having your cards uh, graded through uh, my preferred source and the liaison graded gem. Now, if you're going directly through graded gem, um, the, the prices are cheaper with PSA. If you're just going through PSA directly, the prices can be more expensive. So I just want to make sure that I put that caveat out there. I am comparing the overall cost of grading with CGC in comparison to having your cards graded through graded gem with PSA. But as I said, on average, the cards are a little bit more expensive to have those graded uh, with CGC. So it's definitely something that you want to take into consideration. The other thing and what we have noticed recently is there has been a slightly tainted uh, reputation around CGC. If you haven't seen it already, there was that video floating around of someone being able to open up the CGC slab with their bare hands. And this has, uh, as I said, tainted their reputation a little bit as to you know the, the viability of that product and how well put together uh, it actually is. Now, do I think that this is really going to affect CGC in the long term? No, I don't. I think we basically came across maybe you know the, the one out of a thousand uh, faulty products here uh, with this particular company. CGC is well established. It's been around for a long time and prior to trading cards and prior to being the new kid on the block in the trading card grading realm, uh, they had been grading comics for a long, long, time. So I, I feel strongly that they know what they're doing, uh, but it just so happened that they did have a slip up, um, you know, with that, that particular video and that particular product. But it is something to definitely take note of. And then the third thing, and perhaps the biggest con with CGC and with being the new kid on the block when it comes to grading, is that when you have your cards graded uh, through them, you are or can expect a lower premium uh, when compared to PSA. And what I mean by that is if you took two identically uh, graded cards or in identical condition, so if you took a CGC uh, 9 and a PSA 9 uh, card and, and they were both graded by either company, that PSA 9 graded card is always going to garner a higher value than the equivalent CGC 9. And I think a lot of that is due to the fact CGC is a new company, uh, at least in the trading card realm, and they just haven't garnered that same type of notoriety or that same following. So that is definitely something that you want to take into consideration when you're deciding between the two, uh, understanding that the CGC cards um, are going to come back or are going to sell for a, a lower price point than the equivalent PSA. So now that we've covered all of the pros and the cons uh, that I think are important for CGC, let's go ahead and move on to PSA and discuss some of the pros and cons of going through them. So starting again with the pros. Uh, the probably the biggest pro for uh, PSA, it is the most well-known grading company in my opinion, especially for Pokemon cards. They've been doing it for a long, long time. They've probably got the largest following um, of, of fans, I guess you could say, or people that want to have their cards graded through PSA. And this really is what has spurred most of this conversation is the severe backlog of PSA and really the popularity of grading with them. But we will get to that here in just a second. Beyond that, um, PSA also has a very well-established registry of the population reports and values for cards that have been graded through their company. With CGC, we are still building that and we don't have as massive of a database to go off of to you know, understand what, uh, what certain conditions of cards are going for out on the open market or you know how they have fluctuated. And a lot of that is based upon the population reports. And with PSA, we have a very, very strong registry that you can fall back on. The other big pro is that they are more cost effective 
um, than with CGC. And again, I want to make sure that I stress this caveat, they are more cost effective if you are going through graded gem, which is the third party uh, liaison, you can, you can call them, um, between yourself and PSA. So see, you know, if you're going through graded gem, they are gonna be cheaper than if you're going through uh, CGC directly. And as far as I know, there are not any liaisons that are pro providing the same type of uh, service as graded gem is offering for PSA. So you probably are gonna save more money by going through graded gem and having your cards graded through PSA. And the last thing here is that, uh, you know, just as we were talking about the con before of CGC products coming back at a lower price point for an equivalent grade. Again, that is a pro here for PSA. Uh, if you have two cards of the same condition, uh, that PSA card uh, nine times out of 10 or more is going to come back at a higher value just based upon the notoriety and the popularity of PSA cards. Now, moving on to the cons, the biggest con here, and again, the one that has spurred most of this conversation and these questions of who you should go with is the turnaround time. With PSA, we are looking at about five to six months now to get your cards back. And especially if you've got a large bulk submission of cards, uh, you might even be looking at longer to get those cards back. Throughout the pandemic, PSA has seen a tremendous uh, influx of people having their cards graded and uh, because of the pandemic they don't have the same manpower and the same type of uh, graders there to be able to grade this massive quantity of cards. So they are in a huge backlog and the turnaround times are honestly abysmal. Beyond that, you may not be able to capitalize on the high point of the market with these turnaround times. So if your goal is to perhaps flip cards and then you know maybe reinvest that back into uh, your collection or to buy other products, um, with that long turnaround time, if the if certain cards hit a a high price point, maybe top out at at their their max price point, you may not be able to capitalize on that if you're waiting for those cards you know, for five, six months, half a year essentially, uh, to get back into your possession. You may miss out on that high price point. And then again, just uh, talking about before, CGC being a little more consistent with their uh, grading here, we have found that PSA, and I don't know if it necessarily has to do with just the amount of cards that they're grading now that wasn't that way before, but it does appear that there is less consistency in um, in grades coming back for cards. Uh, and again, this isn't just my opinion, it's something that I've heard reverberated throughout the community. Um, so definitely something that you want to take into consideration. So with all that being said, guys, we've gone over all of the pros, all of the cons for both CGC and PSA, what I'll do now is give you my recommendations uh, that are really based upon what your goals uh, may be and really based upon uh, given situations because that will really determine uh, which one would probably be best for you to go with. So first of all, if you are looking to flip cards quickly, if that is a strategy that you have for your investments, and as I said, maybe you want to reinvest that back into your collection, back into your portfolio, or you want to use the capital gained to then uh, buy other products, then I would recommend going with CGC. Although you will get a lower price point on those cards, you are not waiting that, uh, that long turnaround time for your cards to come back from PSA. And again, you can potentially capitalize on the, um, the high water mark, if you will, of those cards if they're peaking in the market. And, and if that is your goal, then CGC would probably be the better avenue for you to take. Also, if you have more of a short-term investing strategy or are looking to build up capital. Again, short-term investing strategy, probably a year or less uh, to uh, flip a product. And again, if you're trying to build up capital in your business, in your investments, 
then again, it's probably better off to go with CGC because of those turnaround times. You're not gonna get the same premium as you would with PSA, but at the same time, you'll be able to flip through products uh, more quickly and be able to build up that capital that you can then use towards other products or to invest in, uh, or to reinvest that right back into your overall portfolio. Uh, on the flip side, if you want to garner a higher premium on your cards, if uh, you know your goal is to really max out uh, the value on a graded card in whatever condition that it comes back in, uh, as we've said already, PSA is going to be your uh, best option in my opinion. Unless perhaps you know you get a card that comes back in a PSA 10, and maybe you want to go for uh, you know a Beckett pristine 10, uh, which we haven't really discussed Beckett that much um, but if you're wanting to go for an even higher grade then you might want to consider uh, Beckett in that case but either way if your goal is to try to get the maximum value on that particular card in its given condition PSA in my opinion is going to be the better route that you want to take and then finally, if you are investing for the long term, so maybe five plus years or three plus years, um, and you want to have a more appreciable asset, and what I mean by that is over the long term, year over year growth, I think you're going to want to go with PSA as well. Um, now, that's not to say that CGC can't, you know, maybe make a resurgence or might get to the, the same status as PSA, but as things stand right now, uh, if you want a more appreciable asset and you want better growth year over year, then I would recommend going with PSA. And again, guys, with all of this being said, um, it, a lot of it, again, is, is based upon your particular situation, the goals that, you're ha that you have for yourself. It's not an easy answer. It's not just black and white. And with all that being said, I do think that there are opportunities for both companies as we move on into uh, the future. So to start off, CGC, I think, has a great opportunity to make a name for themselves and provide innovation in this space. By being the new kid on the block, they essentially have a clean slate where they can maybe innovate on the label or provide a, a better service or a quicker service. Uh, the, the sky's really the limit for CGC to, uh, and especially with, with PSA, say being so backlogged on product and many people turning to CGC as an alternative, I think now is an excellent time for them to really make a name for themselves and uh, really garner a strong following. Now, what they will actually do and what they might innovate on is to be seen, uh, but I do think that there is a lot of opportunity uh, that CGC has ahead of themselves. Now with PSA, now being a privately held entity, uh, they have a lot more financial leverage to broaden the scope of their operations. And I think this is really where the opportunity in lies for PSA. Um, in my opinion, I think something that would be fantastic is if they opened up more brick and mortar locations throughout the US, throughout Canada, throughout Europe, um, so that people had an easier uh, way of accessing them and you know, being able to drop their products off at a uh, brick and mortar location and feel more secure in their products arriving safely. We've heard horror stories about products getting lost in the mail through the mail service and then not coming back. I think people would feel uh, in both investors and collectors would feel much more secure in being able to drop their products off at a brick and mortar location. And beyond that, you know, by being privately held, they now have the ability to um, increase maybe the technology or increase their grading uh, protocol. Again, going back to that consistency measure, being more consistent in their overall grading. Uh, now that they are privately held, I think that presents a great opportunity for them because they certainly have more financial leverage now. So guys, that is pretty much gonna do it for this discussion on CGC versus PSA. And as I said before, it's not exactly uh, so clear cut as to who you should go with. Really, you have to break down your particular situation, your goals, but use some of the recommendations that I've given here today. Take into consideration both the pros and the cons for CGC and PSA, and you will have a more holistic view as to which company you should in fact grade your cards with. So guys, 
Other than that, I will see you all next time. My name is Pokenav. I'm here to help you navigate the world of Pokemon one video at a time, and I will see you all in the next video.